Hey guys, in this episode of the podcast, I'm going to be sitting down and talking with David Lyon, a solo guitarist, and we're going to be talking a little bit about his new music video that's coming out, uh, his family life, and, uh, you know, talking about listening to some new music and stuff like that. So uh, it was a really fun conversation, and I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. How's it going, guys? We're back at again with another interview, and today's guest I got with me is David Leon, a solo guitarist. What's up, man? How you doing? It, I'm doing swell, doing swell. Uh, not to be that guy that corrects you, but I'm I'm gonna have to. It's lion, actually. It's like the lion. animal. Yeah. My bad, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. It happens all the time. I get it all the time. It's uh, it's because it's spelled spelled weird. So. Yeah, 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 for sure uh but yeah good to meet you man and uh could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and you know what it is you do how you got started all that good stuff sure sure um so i play guitar uh a composer um i play in a band called chronicles and i do uh solo music as well um i play eight string guitar um and it's kind of more like symphonic orchestra metal progressive metal um and yeah i pretty much got started when i was young um i started on the drums when i was 10 and actually before that i started on piano when i was eight um when i was 14 i switched to guitar um as i wanted to start writing my own riffs really um kind of explore writing my own songs um and from there just never stopped playing really uh just kept on going was in a bunch of different bands um, and before kind of going off on my own, doing solo project and then um, starting my other side project, which is Chronicles, uh, which I still have. And yeah, just uh, kind of been writing ever since then. And the writing never stops and the uh, enjoyment for music never uh, gets old and it never stops. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's really cool. And now are you self-produced? Like you, yeah, or do yeah. you go to a studio? I do uh, everything here um, in my little home studio. And then um, as far as like mixing and mastering, I always go to somebody else. I do not trust myself with that. Um, so I like to get another set of ears on that. Same, same, dude. I freaking love technology. It makes it so much easier for us to just, you know, uh, get stuff done on our own instead of having to spend money to go record somewhere else, dude. Yeah, no, uh, definitely. And, my my biggest thing is I just don't have time to learn, you know, about mixing and mastering. You know, I really don't um, outside of writing and stuff. I mean, I have a full life as it is, but like, um, you know, writing is my main goal. And that's like what I want to get better and better and better at. And it's like, I don't got time for that shit for mixing and mastering. I'm going to just spend it to somebody else. Oh, yeah. Let and, them then, handle like, it. Uh, and then like just figuring out the whole learning curve of just like mixing yourself. is just like, man, it's a whole... It's a whole process. You can't. It's not just adjusting levels, and it's so much more no. than that. And it's that's so the, much more. It's a. It's a totally different art form. That's the thing. Is yep. it's you know, it's not like writing music. It's a lot different. Exactly. Like you got to have a good ear for that stuff too. Like I, I feel like I don't have necessarily a bad ear, but when I hear sound engineers and stuff say, "Oh yeah, I hear this weird thing in the mix," it's like where, where, dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not the. I don't have the ear for it either. I, I really don't. I'm like a. Uh, uh-uh. I don't. I don't hear the difference when someone's like, "Oh, can you hear the difference between this and this?" I'm like, "Nope." Nope. <laughs> All why, I know is, does it sound good or not? <laughs> exactly. That's why you're the guy. Yeah. Hell yeah, man! And you said you had a full life too, and and uh, I saw in your your latest music video, which we'll talk about later that you have a family too. So like, how do you balance all that stuff out? You got your band, your solo project, your family. I, and I imagine you, you do another job as well. Like, like yeah. how do you balance all that stuff? Uh, it's a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, I love music, so I make time for it. Um, yeah. So I have two kids, uh, a wife, um, and a house to keep up with. Um, I have a full-time job, um, that I work in tech sales uh here in, in in utah so uh full-time job there um yeah it's it's one of those things where I'll, I'll wake up and i have two jobs to do you know which is being a dad um and then I, i'm lucky and i get to work from home 
Um, so that really helps out a lot. Um, so then I go and start my second job. Uh, and what's great about working from home is you get to be present a lot as a dad um, and kind of pop in and out when you hear some crying or some shit is going down and you feel like you need to step in. You're like, what the fuck is going on upstairs? <laughs> um, you really get to help out. And, you know, um, so yeah, it's, it's start the second job really. And then hang out with the kids after that job is done. Um, and after they go to bed, um, it's time for my third job. So it's a, it's a full day and, uh, but I love it. You know, I, I wouldn't, I, I couldn't imagine what I would do if I, if I didn't do music. Um, and it's, it's all for the love of, of, of music for me. You know, it's, it's why I keep on doing, you know, going back to it. Cause it is a full day. It's, it's a lot, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't rather, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. So yeah, it's a full time, full time gig, but I, I enjoy it. It's great. That's awesome. That, that's really good to hear, man. Like, you know, a lot of people, like I know some people personally that are just like, damn, I wish I didn't have a family or whatever, just so I could do music full time and all that stuff. So just to say yeah, there's you a, really enjoy it. So it's really, there's cool. a lot of people who, you know, I think it happened more when I was younger. Um, like when I was in my early twenties, I, I remember when, if somebody got, you know, somebody became pregnant or if somebody, you know, um, you know, if anybody had kids, pretty much, it was kind of like, oh, my career is over. My music career is over. And it's like, that's, that's not how it is. You know, not at all. It, just because you have kids does not mean you have to stop playing music. Sure, you're going to probably have to work a lot harder. Um, probably have to work uh, a lot, uh, you know, kind of to stay motivated uh, and kind of uh, find the motivation. It might, you know, be a lot harder to find that. But doesn't mean your career is over doesn't mean you can't keep on creating what you love uh so yeah it's uh i always like am sad when people are like oh yeah i'm gonna have to stop because you know i got kids i'm like that doesn't mean you have to stop doing what you love um kids actually just like heightens it you know it really actually uh, you can have your you know parent job and then do what you love as well and have best of both worlds yeah, it's a good motivator too, because you're just like, okay, I got to make this work now, so I can make money doing this to provide for sure. them, you know? Sure. And yeah. Um. For yeah, I 100. percent And going back to the whole technology too, it's like so much easier now to like even for like the family side of things too. It's just like you know you can go online and find you know a babysitter or something like that too. So. Sure. Um. Yeah, you can you can find anything online, and what's great is you can release everything online too. You know, you can just create music in your bedroom and release it. Um, and that's the other thing is, is that like, just because you make music doesn't mean you have to go on tour at all. You know, you can do the internet thing um, or you can go on tour. Like you can totally do whatever you want. You know, uh, it, it's, it's your dream um, and kids shouldn't stop you from having that dream. The kids should be a part of, that dream for you like for me like my kids like motivate me to want you know I, I, as as they get older you know I don't want to be that dad that just went to work all day and that was it and then uh you know just kind of came home plopped on the couch type thing you know I, I want to be able to set that a good example for them to you know strive for something and never stop doing what you love so it actually is a huge motivator for me I feel that man. that's a, that's really good to hear again, for sure. And like that's really cool that you found that balance of everything, so you're there and able to do all these things. Because like the production on your music stuff is actually really good. Like even the music videos and stuff like that. Oh, like, thank you. The fact that you're able to put in that much effort into that and still balance it out is like really respectable. Yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of uh, long nights and waking up early, but uh, it's all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> lots of uh waking up going fuck i wish i would have gotten more sleep but you know uh that uh early seven o'clock uh hit alarm is comes around real quick yep and uh i mean when it comes to touring like do you plan on doing any tours like that any any of the sort yeah i mean i would love to um i'm not at that point yet uh like, you know for me it would have to be worth it um i would probably be able to do my job tro- my job from tour i don't know i've actually I can't fully say that because I've never really been on tour before. Uh, I played 
quite a bit of shows, but never been on an actual tour. So I couldn't, couldn't 100% uh, tell you that I could do my job from a tour, but um, it would have to make sense for me. Um, but I, have, I would have to have the right people as well. Um, and I feel like I would have to have the following for me to actually go on tour. I don't, I don't think that the following is there. Um, once I g- gather, a, you know, maybe a bigger following and, uh, and there's an appetite, I would totally, totally be down to doing it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to make money somehow. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, music, uh, music is an expensive, uh, an expensive, I don't want to say hobby, but, uh, craft, you know, like it's, it's, it takes a lot of money. So if there's no income, (laughs) uh, yeah, it's, it's bad news bears. Oh yeah, dude. I, I can't tell you how much money we've lost in like music videos just for like, just for the end product to only get like, you know, 3000 or so views and get demonetized. It's like, ah, uh, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's, but. it's difficult. That's why I, I try not to, to look at the views. You know, I try to look at it as, you know, just, just con- continue to do what you love doing and, um, see what happens. You know, um, if nothing happens, it's okay because you had fun, you know, you, you still did what you loved. Um, and, uh, if something does happen, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so I try not to look at it, but I, I do know, I, I know your, I feel your frustration because yeah, these things are really expensive and it's a, um, you don't usually get things in return, right? Um, if you blow a lot of money on a music video, you're not going to ever see that back. <laughs> you're never really going to see it back. And, you know, even if you get a ton of views, most of the time you're signed, uh, by a record label, if you get a ton ton of views uh and therefore you're probably not making that that money yeah so I mean, but like uh, you said, yeah. though, the experience is like it, it it was so much fun filming them so that for me yes. in itself was really worth it just a whole day hanging out with the homies getting stuff done so oh yeah it's it's a lot of fun and dude there is nothing like a the kind of like full day shoot feeling and like the like how drained you become like the next day and like after you're done shooting like i've done like 16 hour shoots before and it is crazy how tired you are and like you have zero energy you are wiped it's like you know a full day of like working out is almost what it's like and the next day you're just like (laughs) this is brutal (laughs) like i feel horrible uh it there's nothing there's no other feeling like it but i love it i love it it's a great weird horrible feeling <laughs> yeah same dude we've done uh the longest we've done was like 17 hours for one Ooh, but yeah the, the ones after that were much shorter but we live in like the desert so so there was many times after where we all got heat stroke oh god and that sucked but i mean once we saw the end result coming together it was so worth it dude that's that's insane you guys got heat stroke holy shit yeah, the whole wow. the whole crew, dude. It was like really, really hot. We were filming outside. I was in a latex suit, so all the sunbeams were just getting absorbed through my skin. And yeah, all of us Ooh. got heat stroke. Dude, that's gnarly. That's yeah, man. awful. Ah, but yeah, it, it's totally worth it. Totally worth it, right? <laughs> and how do you go about uh, planning, dude? Uh, your music videos and all that stuff. Do you just like? you know, internalize it yourself? Do you go back and forth with somebody else, the director? Or... Yeah, I would say it's a lot of long night drinking by myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's actually where I, I it's, believe it or not, and it's really sad, actually. That's, that's really sad to say. But, like, that's kind of where I come up with my ideas is just kind of sitting down by myself, kind of, like, in, in the dark um, and just thinking of ideas and, like, listening to the song over and over again and like thinking about like what it is that this song is really thinking me out and making me think about or i will kind of try to come up with a concept first um and then fit a song to it um and with these last three videos that i did um they're kind of all go together um so they kind of were all thought out around the same time. Um, And 
yeah, so it was just a lot of long nights by myself uh, in the dark and just thinking of this concept and what I want to say, really. Um, so yeah, that's it. nothing flashy or anything like that. It's just me in a dark room being weird uh, and just thinking about what I want to say. Cool. Um, and like, do you consider yourself like a very like, well, like I think you're a very creative person, but do you consider yourself to be like very like, there's a lot you need to express? I didn't. It's funny. Uh, I don't think of myself as a real creative person. And I didn't feel like I had a lot to say until I started thinking. <laughs> like, you know, before I, before these last three videos, I was just doing these normal guitar playthroughs. And then uh, a good buddy of mine said, nobody wants to see you fucking playing guitar anymore. Like, stop. Like, everybody does that. Like the only people that you're going to, you know, only audience you're really going to attract is just the other nerdy musicians. And it's like, why don't you try to tell a story? And I was like, what, what the fuck kind of story could I really tell with my instrumental music? It's instrumental. Um, and then I was like, well, maybe I could tell a story. It is instrumental. So it's like kind of a movie score, if you think about it. And my, my music is you know somewhat cinematic anyways or at least I, I i feel like it's cinematic um is- and so i was like well maybe this might be easier than i thought and then once i started going i was like man i actually have a lot that i want to say and i think i have some i think that a lot of musicians are going through probably something similar that to what i'm going through and I kind of want to speak to those musicians and speak to kind of the the internet kind of guitarists and drummers, bass players, and everybody who is just trying to get by doing what they love um, and kind of speak to those people and the people who are kind of experiencing like burnout, hate, and just awful comments, um, as we all do. Uh, that's just kind of the gig of being an internet musician, I guess. There's no way around it. Uh, And I always say, you know, don't listen to those people. Um, You know, like what what kind of life do you have to have to actually go out of your way to talk shit on somebody's video? Like it's always ridiculous to me. Um, So I always, you know, say to ignore them, right? Um, However, sometimes they still sing, sting, right? They'll still sometimes get to you every now and then. Um, And some more than others. So I always kind of wanted to like speak to those people, those musicians. Um, and so I kind of did it in this three-parter uh, video. Um, the first one, the pride and the hunt were very similar. Um, and then the third one, hyenas is kind of wrapping it all up and it's a lot darker. Um, and I think it more hits home to the, kind of mundane life that we all kind of live and trying to snap out of that really. Um, and it really talks more about mental health than, than anything. So yeah, um, I found out that I had a lot to say <laughs> and so I wanted to say it. Um, and so I did. I didn't know there were a trilogy. That's interesting now, like having watched yeah. them and like seeing them, now that you explained it yeah it makes total sense they totally go with each other yeah and hyenas uh there's a reference to the other two videos um there's actually quick flashes of um the pride and the hunt um so just basically kind of tying that trilogy together and then it's pretty much the end of that that trilogy wow that's so cool man thank you the first one we saw was the hunt yeah, exactly. Uh, which we reacted to on stream, and yeah, that one was was dope. I love that one. Thank with you. With all the, the hate I comments and stuff like that, I loved it, and that's so cool to see. Like, very because like the the video goes really well with the music, and it's just like I thought you brought it together really, really, really well. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it was it was fun to do, um, and yeah i I can't wait to do more. Awesome. And how long did it take you to get like all that done? Like come up with like from start of the idea to like finally Ooh. 
this with this third one coming out? Like, how long did that take? Well, I believe I started filming in. Why do I feel like the Pride came out in April last year? Um, it did. It, it came out in April, I believe. Uh, so, uh, I guess, I guess less than a year. Um, it took me. Uh, I think a lot of it would have gone faster, but you know, when you're dealing with multiple people and you know a bigger crowd for like the hunt and stuff and getting these people together. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time. Um, I think that as far as the full concept, uh, it probably only took me a couple of months, really. And it actually kind of started with the Pride. I actually started filming the Pride before I even had the whole concept idea. I filmed the playthrough sections of the guitar, and I told my buddy, you know, I'm just going to release a playthrough, and he's the one who was like, no. Like, nobody wants to fucking see that shit anymore. Nobody cares uh, about you playing guitar in a fucking forest, dude. Uh, like, it's it's been done, dude. And he's like, you got to come up with some sort of, you know, story that you want to tell. And so we actually filmed the playthrough first. And then, uh, which I believe was probably February of 2023. And it was cold. <laughs> It was so cold because we were up in the mountains. Um, and then, yeah, we probably wrapped up about a month later. And that's pretty much when I had the idea. And there was actually supposed to be a fourth video, um, one in between the hunt and um, and hyenas. But I ended up scrapping that idea because it's a little controversial and I did not want to do that. So uh, I... I completely scrapped that um but yeah uh yeah i would take i think it took me a couple about a month or so to as far as like the concept goes and then um to get everything done and filmed yeah about about a year um we filmed hyenas back in early december i think it was like december 1st of 2023 so um yeah there's been a lot uh i, I feel like there's been a lot that's gone on last year i feel like i didn't like post that much but I, I was kind of more dealing with this stuff that, and this is stuff that was way more important to me than just kind of releasing playthroughs. Um, because we've all released the playthroughs before and it gets you some, you know, it's fun. It's, it's good. Um, you know, showcasing just your guitar riffs and stuff. But I just felt like once I thought of the idea and the concept, I just felt like I had something bigger to say. Um, and I, I would rather have done that. And so I'm stoked. Uh, and after that, this there's there's a lot more that I I want to film, so it's going to be fun. But yeah, to answer long story longer, about a year probably to to film all this stuff and get all this stuff together. That's still not bad. I mean, for three videos and all that stuff, that's you know reasonable amount of time. You know, sometimes it takes people a lot longer just because they want to have every little thing perfect and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, if it was up to me, it probably would have been a lot quicker. I like to move fast, but um you know i'm at the mercy of everybody else and i'm i'm glad i'm not doing it alone if i was doing it alone it would probably end up like shit so i'm glad that i'm going and working with other people and seeing their visions and you know um having them kind of bring it to life for me so it's better that way that's the shitty part about being a musician you were very reliant on other people you really are um when you're kind of the one-man band uh you know that that's the hard part i think for me being the musician um that i am is that i can't do it all i want to do it all but i just don't have the bandwidth or the time really you know uh like we kind of mentioned before mixing and mastering i don't have the time to learn to do that um cinematography i don't have the time to do that um and i'd rather spend my money on mixing and mastering than like let's say a really really good camera uh so yeah it's you know you pick your battles and that's kind of what you get for being the one man band is you, you can't do it all um or maybe you can i just i can't because i don't have the bandwidth <laughs> i wish i did <laughs> same same i i really wish i could mix and master it's just i don't i, I can't <laughs> it's uh, tough it is tough it really is and then you're solo too so like all the costs come right back to you while it's screen yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
well, I mean, speaking of the new video, you got the new video hyenas coming out, like, you know? Yeah. You want to talk a yep. little bit more about that one? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited for that one. I mean, it's it's a very vulnerable video. Um, that's why it was, it was, I knew it was going to be the last uh, video that I did for the series. Like I said, there's supposed to be a, a, one before, but like this one was, I think I was dragging my feet a lot with this one. Um, because of how vulnerable it was for me to do. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. Um, we'll see. We got a lot of work, uh, stuff in the works for this video, uh, outside of just, uh, the official music video. There's a lot of other stuff we actually want to do with this. Um, and so, yeah, we'll kind of see how that goes. I'm, I'm excited for it to release. Uh, you got a little, um, preview of it before um so I'm, I'm excited that you checked it out yeah i really enjoyed it man i liked all the the aspects of it you know like the inner battles and whatnot that you yeah kind of go through in the video so and it just meshes really well again with like the music thank you yeah it was uh it was a fun one to film um like i said i mean it was fun, but not fun. Uh, the not fun part was, you know, the vulnerability. Also, dancing. I don't fucking dance. I don't <laughs> dance. I have never danced a day in my life. Um, but I knew, like, you know, once I got this concept together, like, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to learn how to do this shit. And I wish I would have, pre- oh, man, I wish I would have prepared a lot sooner than I did. I think I started to dance about almost four weeks before the shoot and when you've never danced a day in your life not not that that was it was way too soon it was cutting it way too close um i think i danced while filming for like five hours straight i was dead i was absolutely dead while we were filming um so a lot of vulnerable things and things i didn't want to do but i knew for the story that i I just, I had to get it done. It's, it was for the the vision and for, you know, uh, my art and yeah, just to kind of be able to express what I wanted to express. Uh, so very uncomfortable and very, uh, outside of my realm. Well, it's good that you did it though. Like, did, did you have to choreograph it yourself or did you have I did. a little help? Yeah. That? No, I, I, I choreographed it myself. I, um, kind of a funny story so uh I, like i said i started prepping probably about maybe a month before the video shoot and usually before video shoots you know for guitar playing i'll probably prep like a week and a half two weeks before the shoot um and i started prepping about a month and i, I told my wife yeah i gotta get down to practice and she's like man and like it was every night too every single day i tried to not skip a day and there was days that i did skip but she's like you know after a while i could tell she was like man you've been practicing a lot like how hard is that fucking song you know and then there was nights that i would come up to the bedroom you know and i'd be out of breath and she asked me like i think it was like three times like why are you out of breath and I would just be like, oh, I just ran up the stairs. I just ran up the stairs. She had no idea what I was doing. Um, I didn't tell her a single thing about this video, really. I, I mean, I kind of lightly touched on the story. Um, that way she wasn't blindsided, you know, when it was, when she found out, you know, what it was about. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I choreographed it myself. Uh, you know, uh, it wasn't, it's nothing too crazy. Obviously, you could see it's nothing ridiculous. Um, but it was it was actually fun you know by the i think like two weeks in i was actually having fun like i almost couldn't wait to practice um i got good at touching my toes which i could never do before like i got like you know i was starting to um you know be able to stretch more like i could never bend over and touch my toes never and by like week two i was like doing it i'm like oh my god this is great um so yeah, it like kind of became a little fun uh, and more of a, instead of like something that like I dreaded, it was, I kind of looked forward to it and I was like something new that, uh, you know, I've never ever dabbled in and 
it's not like it was anything great, but it was still fun. Uh, filming it wasn't fun just because of how long it took. And then dancing in front of other people is like, when you're not a dancer, is like, God, shoot me now. Uh, but yeah, that was, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. But yeah, did a lot of, you know, like I said, four weeks of planning and I was able to choreograph something stupid. So yeah. <laughs> did your wife see the end result? What was her reaction to, to your dancing? Uh, I'm pretty sure she said, you're dancing? Like while while watching it, and she's like, "What the fuck is this, David?" Yeah, it was it was a good reaction. It was it was fun. Um, I enjoyed showing her it. That's awesome, man. Hell yeah, I can't can't wait for other people to to see it and you know see what they think. Yeah, I I'm excited. Um, you know, of course, worst comes to worst, nothing happens, and you just am stuck with this cool video that you know I I created and. I'm cool with that. I'm okay with that. I like it. Um, I am proud of the work that um, that we did, and so that's all that matters, really. I'm excited for. Uh, I'm excited to get it out there for sure. Dope, dope. And who are who are some of your inspirations? You know, as a as a musician. Hmm. Uh, it's a good question. Are, are we talking about music? Um, my biggest inspiration for like my style of music, I would say, is um, "Protest the Hero" uh, is like number one for me. Uh, I constantly rip them off, um, and I would say Hans Zimmer as well. Uh, another huge inspiration, Angel Vivaldi, um, Sixth. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of those bands really, um, and those artists. Uh, Born of Osiris, um, huge inspiration for me. Um, there's a lot. There, there's a lot. Um, a, I don't listen to a ton of music nowadays, but there are still kind of the bands that I go to uh, that are like my go tos, and I would say like those are like my top for sure. And there's like no new new artist, I guess that you know has caught your eye yet, or you know like I'm too you know, old for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too old for that shit. Uh, I think I, you know, once you hit 30, you know, you stop just pursuing new music and you just listen to the same shit you grew up on, right? That's what we all do. No, I I will check out new music, but I am, I, like I said, I don't listen to a lot of new, like, not that I don't listen to a lot of new music. I don't listen to a lot of music, period. Um, and so it has to really catch my, my ear um, for me to really, like, put it on. Um, yeah, so it's, I'm, I'm a stickler when it comes to music. Like I know what I like and, um, and I definitely know what I don't like as well. So it's, uh, it's hard to get me to listen to, to something, uh, anything really, just because like I said, I don't, I don't listen to a ton of music. Gotcha. Dude, I'm weird. You remind me I'm a lot fucking of weird. <laughs> no, you're good, man. You, you remind me a lot of, uh, the other dude that we, that does the channel with me, Alan. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys would have had a, a great chat. You guys, you guys are a lot alike. He's also a big Dude. fan of Protest the Hero. Oh hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, there. I grew up listening to them. I think I was 16 when I first listened to them, and I was absolutely blown away because I think the stuff I was listening to before them was probably Avenged Sevenfold. So that jump was huge for me, and then knowing that. Because I the, the first album I listened to was Kazaya, and I believe I was like fifteen or sixteen, something like that. And like listening to that, it just blew my mind. I just didn't know that there was music like that out there. I had no idea. And then knowing that like these kids were not that much older than me, and I was like, whoa! And that's really what like spiked my kind of musical journey. Really was knowing that those things were doable and that you could accomplish that if you just practice your ass off. Um, and so after I learned uh, about them and I heard them for the first time, it was like immediately I jumped on that and I just listened to them nonstop and just tried to mimic what they were doing really. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably, that, that will probably always be my favorite band just because uh, for probably nostalgic reasons as well. Um, but, the music that they still create today is just as good. 
Um, and so at any time that they release an album, I will be, I will be listening to it and probably ripping it off because it's so good. <laughs> Dope, man. And like, have you heard any of like the Japanese stuff? Like, you know, like there's a lot of really, really good overseas Japanese bands, dude. Like really, really good. I probably have heard of or maybe listened to a little bit of it, but nothing that comes like to the top of my head um, or anything I could tell you about really. Um, yeah. Uh, I know that there's a lot of amazing music coming out from all places of the world um, constantly. Right. Yep. Um, I just, I just never listen. I, I'm horrible. I just don't listen to a lot of music. Um, I need to get back on that. I got myself into a kind of a rut where I just, I'm not going to lie. Like, pretty much just stopped listening to music altogether uh probably for like the last couple of years i haven't really listened to much you I know mean, I'll, I'll listen to music when my favorite bands come out with new music or um i'll have like a mindless playlist while i work out at the gym but nothing else really um it's awful i need to get back on it because there's so much there's so much goodness to listen to right there's so yeah. much good music out there um that could really help shape my writing um, and just taking in new ideas and new experiences. Uh, so I need to get back on that. Uh, I really do. I think that that's something that's on my list for this year is to kind of venture back out into exploring new music. Yeah. I, I mean, there's different types of music enjoyers, you know, like different aspects that they enjoy, like you and my buddy, Alan, you guys enjoy the writing and the performing of music, right? I'm more on the listener spectrum where I like enjoy just listening a lot of the time, you know, not that I don't enjoy yeah. writing as well, but I mostly prefer to listen. That's why I love going to concerts and all that stuff. And, you know, you get a rare breed of people who like both. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely I feel like I listen to learn. Um, and that's why. Even sometimes when my favorite bands come out, it takes me forever to listen to their new albums. Um, like, let's say, Between the Buried and Me, for example. I don't think I've listened to their newest album, Colors 2, yet, because um, and I think maybe I'm the only one and I'm just weird. Uh, but it takes a lot to digest. like Because like I'm taking this information in and I'm not just listening to listen. I'm listening to kind of like learn and bring it in and kind of understand what everybody's doing um, and understand maybe how, like how these things, how do they think of these things? Um, and it's just a lot to digest. And so I know that for me to listen to colors too, man, I'm going to, I'm going to need, I'm going to need some hours, right? Like I'm going to need to sit down for some hours and like every day, listen to it to digest it um because you know that when like something like that you can't just listen to it one time and be like hey cool like it's a journey and like those bands will take you on a journey and it's meant to be that way um at least for i guess for me it's supposed to be that way um so yeah even when those bands come out with new albums it will take me a while to come around to that to that album um so, yeah, I, I think that I listen to learn, and I probably need to just listen to fucking listen, and that's it. Um, it would probably make things a lot easier uh, on my brain, but it's a hard part to shut off for me. It really is. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, like, you know, you have to listen to listen sometimes, not all the time, you know, because if you did it all the time, like, I don't think people would progress as much with music, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I think I just get overly critical sometimes. And I think that some of my friends hate it. Like, dude, just sit back and just enjoy the fucking song. And I'm like, no, I can't. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it in. And I'm trying to like, piece it together and understand what they're doing. And yeah, so it's, it needs to stop. I do just need, I, I feel like I just need to listen sometimes. But it's hard to do. It's easier said than done. If you do, man, like we got tons, tons of recommendations for you, especially on like the Japanese side. Like, I'd take them. I would take them. Send them my way. I will see if I will listen to them. <laughs> there's one guitarist in particular that that's like, uh, well, he's not 
He has a solo. He does have solo stuff, but he plays for a band called uh, Galnerius. His name is Shu. It's spelled S Y U, but it's pronounced Shu. Okay. And he's really good. His solo stuff is like mind blowing. Just very clean shredder and really really good stuff. That's awesome. No, send it to me. I will. I will try my best to uh, to look into it because I I do need to take in more music. It's it's true. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool, man. I, I'm curious what you would think of another band too. They're called uh, Soko Ninaru. Very progressive. Uh, not a whole lot of like distortion stuff. Like very clean, just like okay. craziness going on with clean vocals over it. So I'm very curious to see what you would think of them. So, did they have like a viral video that happened that a lot of people were reacting to recently? Uh, I don't think so. They did release a new music video recently. Um, but it was a song that Is was it just going two on people? to an anime. It's a three piece. Oh, it's three piece. Okay. I can't, I, I feel like the, there's a video that I saw recently, um, and it was like two people and it was really good. It was like metal, but not distorted, a lot of guitar tapping. And it was like really cool. I was like, wow, this is, this is interesting. Uh, this is something that's not happening a lot. Yep. It's very, it's pretty common in Japan. There's, there's a lot of bands really? like that out there. Yeah, dude. That's cool. Yeah. Man, I'm going to have to. Maybe I need to dive into that for sure. Dude, it's a it's a crazy rabbit hole to go down. Like we I bet. we've been on like the Japanese journey for like almost three years now and it's still we're still finding new shit every day. It's still wild. Still finding gems, huh? Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. That's great. Oh uh, yeah. There's so much music to discover. There's so much. Um and we will never get to it all. Like with yep. Spotify and just you know, Apple Music. I mean, just the ease of use to be able to, I guess, how accessible it is to just throw your music out there. It's like never ending. Um, I can't remember how, how many songs are being uploaded to Spotify every day. Why do I feel like it's like 70,000 or something like that? There, There's a crazy number like that. And it's like, dude, yeah, you can, there's never, you're never going to be able to listen to everybody. But, you know, I think that for me, like one thing that I, I, I need to do, like I said, like this year, I, I want to dive into more music because the more, you know, you surround yourself with new experiences and the new examples, like the more you're going to be able to take in, the more that you're going to be able to um, kind of use those examples too. Because I, like I said, I, I listen to learn um, to kind of take them in and see how I can apply it to what I'm doing. Um, and I think that that's uh, what I need to get back to for sure. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's a double edged sword as well, you know. Like up being it uh, for it to be so easy to upload stuff, but like you're putting it in an ocean of other people. It's like you know, it's, like uh, on the one hand, it gives people the motivation to actually do it. It's just like okay, I don't have an excuse. Like I got it. You know, it's so easy. I can do it. You know, but yeah. Who's gonna listen to it when there's so much other stuff out there? I mean, yeah. If 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 that number is true, don't quote me on that. If it is seventy thousand, I mean, a day being uploaded, yeah, you're gonna want to have to try to stand out from that that seventy thousand, right? Yep. It's a it's a hard task to do, but uh, still I'm gonna, gonna do find it. That, actually, <laughs> oh, I'm curious now to Spotify every day. Yeah, I wonder what the number is. Oh, you're close. It's it's sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Okay, yeah, I 60, still that's new a tracks shit every day. That Whoa. is a lot. I thought it was yeah. higher, to be honest, but that's still an insane amount. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, good lord. Yep. It's yeah. So good luck to everybody. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it's on now. Nah. Yeah, and. That it just goes to show you how many people create music and how much music is really just out there. It's good. It's cool. Yep. It's a good. Good little fun stat. What What do you think? Like, I ask this to everybody. Like, what do you think the current state of the music industry is? Like, everything. Hmm. Like the quality of music. You know, like we were talking about, like the amount of people releasing music every day. So, like, it's oversaturated. Like touring, all that stuff. Like, well, how do you think it's going? Oh man, that's a it's a tough question. Um and it's weird. It's it's a tough question for me because although I create music and put it out there, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm in the scene. 
of like like obviously I, I create music, you know, so I, I guess I'm in the music scene, but like I think I just do what I do and I just try to push it out there. Um I'm not heavily involved in what's going on in the scene. Um, you know, I try to fo- I try to follow algorithms and trends like that. Um I don't go to too many shows. Um so the state of it, I think that we're kind of if I had to guess, we're kind of in this weird limbo thing. Um, you know, with Twitch being as big as it is, you know, many bands can do live performances on there. Um, and some people would rather just watch a live performance from the comfort of their own home in a on their phone than go to a show, which is fine. Um, I don't think that we're totally there yet where we're going to cancel live shows. God, no. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get there because I think that there's going to be people that really um, are going to crave that live setting for sure. I don't think that will ever go away. Um, obviously, I think uh, musicians get taken advantage of uh, from streaming platforms. Um, I, I definitely think that they get taken advantage of. So there's just something to work out there. Um, I don't think it will ever get worked out. If actually, if anything, it will probably get worse. But musicians are still going to create no matter what because it's kind of just what we do. Um, music is is almost in our blood, you know. It's it's just it's just what we do. So we're going to keep on creating and we're going to keep on putting it out there. Um, which means it's going to be a lot harder to be heard um, with sixty thousand you know songs getting uploaded every day. It's a hard to stand out from the crowd. Um, so there's that aspect. Um, and I don't think it's as easy for people to go viral anymore either. Um, they've a lot of these platforms have changed their algorithms, and so um, you know, with TikTok, I heard um, changing to kind of long format. Um, it's going to be a lot harder for your clips, your music clips, and all that stuff to go viral. Um, I think it's going to get a lot harder for musicians. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm kind of jumping all over the place just because I don't think that I know the answer. I just know that things are not, I don't think that the state of the scene is great. Um, and I don't think it'll get better, though. <laughs> yeah. I think that maybe I, I'm I, I'm sounding kind of doomsday-ish, uh, and I don't mean to, but I, I don't see it getting a lot better at all. Um, I think people are going to get greedier. And um, things are going to get more and more oversaturated. Uh, and it's just going to be a lot harder to stand out from the crowd. Um, the Taylor Swifts of the, the world will always own, continue to own the world. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a lot harder to become that Taylor Swift um, as well. So I don't think the state of the scene is great, I guess, to sum it up. Um, I am totally uh, – it's up for debate, though. Like, I, I'm not like this is gospel or anything. I, yeah, I think yeah. that this is just kind of what I think and what I'm just kind of observing uh, from afar. Um, but, yeah, it's open open for debate for sure. No, I totally I can agree be with you, wrong. man. I mean, it's not – as great as it can be, especially, I mean, like there is a lot of negative aspects, but I mean, they're, they're on the flip side, I think there's also a lot of really good aspects as well. Yes. Know? I probably should have mentioned that. Uh, there's a ton of good aspects. I mean, the fact that I can upload a song to fucking Spotify and have it out into the world is dope. This, the, the fact that I can create music from the comfort of my own home is awesome. The fact that you can be heard without having to do a tour or without having to play a show is also awesome. I think that's huge. That's crazy to me. I mean, I I think that when I was younger, I I don't know if I would have ever imagined this is how it would turn out or this is how it would be. You know, um I grew up uh, back in the days where you had to go on tour in order to, you know, be successful or make money. Um there's a lot uh there's a lot that you that is awesome about where we're at um 
as far as music goes. There's a lot of plus sides to it, for sure. I mean, the fact that I can be uh, a dad and have a full-time job uh, and still do music, like, is that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, tons of plus sides, for sure. I probably should have mentioned that as well, instead of sounding like a, a negative Nancy. <laughs> And for me, like the most, like the probably the best thing about it is just the quality of music has improved so much. Like, oh yeah, I listen to mixes from songs like back that were released back in like the 2010s, early 2000s, and stuff. And like you compare them to now, and it's just like it's so much different. You know, it sounds so much cleaner and beefier. It's like, yeah, for sure. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not saying that I am like a audio snob, but there are some albums that I won't go back to because they sound like shit. Yeah. You know, at the time they didn't sound like shit. Uh, I mean, I have, I have them <laughs> like even my own albums, you know, I won't, I won't listen to them because they sound like shit. Um, we've, we've even come a long way in the last three years, three to four years, you know? Um, so yeah, like I, I think that music is sounding a lot better. Um, the quality is, is unbelievable right now and it's only going to continue to get better. And then also, too, like people, I feel like people are more open, especially when it comes to like the extreme genres, you know, you got bands like Lorna Shore blowing up, Slaughter to Prevail, yeah. who are extreme metals, but people are like are giving them the time of day just because, you know, it's so like, because they're opening their minds to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I loved when Lorna Shore uh, broke the internet. I thought that that was the coolest thing ever for, for metal. Um the fact that they went viral was just insane and well deserved, very well deserved. Um, whether you like it or not, um, it was well deserved. Uh, I, I just thought it was—I was blown away. So when I first heard that uh, through the Hellfire, I believe, um, I was like, "Wow, they did it! Like that was awesome. That was really cool." And you had people who weren't metalheads that were watching it and were like, whoa, this is gnarly. Um, I thought that was really cool for, for, for metal, for sure. Um, yeah, I love that. I think I would like to see more of that. Um, and it, it does happen and it will happen. Um, unless they keep on messing with algorithms and then now we're all yeah. screwed. <laughs> Um, you know, cause they, they, they say that the, that happens, you know, one out of how many, you know, people, um, but once somebody does it, that marks, that marks it off the list until what the next, the next one out of how many million people or how, how many million musicians. So once that happens, it's like, oh, it's not going to happen for quite a while in metal maybe, but it actually does happen more often than not. I feel like, um. Slaughter to prevail, like you said, um, same thing. Um, it's cool to see. I think that metal needs it, needs more of it, and I think it deserves more of it. Um, the things that uh, certain metal musicians do is unbelievable, and they don't get the credit for it. Um, and they deserve the credit for it because it's really good music, and it's it's technical, and it's these guys practice their ass off to to get where they are. Um, so yeah. It's cool. Yep. I think another aspect that helped with, you know, like metal bands getting more, you know, eyes on them and, you know, getting the time of day is like the reaction videos. I think that helped tremendously. You got the hip hop guys saying good stuff about them and all that stuff. How do you feel about, yes. how do you feel rea about reaction videos, you know? Reac reaction videos are like my saving grace. I mean, you kidding me? Like, I love reactors you know i love I, like you guys uh metal burb um man there's there's so many ray reaction and ray actions like dude, there's so many of you guys and it's amazing like, i love what you guys do i mean you guys are just listening to to new music and giving your opinions on it and it's amazing um i think that you guys do a lot for the community probably more than you know um the fact that you can get give a little person like me the time in the day and that you can share it with an audience is amazing. And I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, I think, I think it's awesome. 
And I hope that people continue to do it and continue to react to what they want to react to. Um, it's not fun when people are, you know, forced to, hey, you guys got to check out this video. Um, you know, if labels are telling them you have to, you can only react to those videos. That sucks. Um, but I get it at the same time. Um, but, you know, I think just as long as you're reacting to what you want to react to, I think that that's amazing. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. And yeah, I, I appreciate all of you guys. You're amazing. I'm glad that that's a thing. Awesome, man. Well, anyway, yeah. I think that's a good place to to end it. But yeah, man, guys, check out David Leon. New video, Hyenas, coming out February 16th, right? Yep, Fred, February 16th. Yep, Sweet. you got it. Is there anything else you want to plug in before we, we cut it off? Um, No, just uh, for all you musicians out there, just keep on doing what you love. Just no matter what, just just keep pushing. You guys got it. Um, I appreciate you having me on. Um, great chats. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's good chats for sure. No, thank you so much for coming on, man. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, I'll be be seeing you. We'll be keeping up with you. So, and again, check out David Leon, guys. See you in the next one.